The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Nodulator Pro, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Kristen McMillan, research agronomist with the University of Manitoba, joins us here on Real Agriculture. And Kristen, we've seen a fair number of fields with high aphid populations, soybean fields with high aphid populations here in Manitoba this year. Looking back on the last few weeks, what are some of the things that we've learned when it comes to soybean aphids? Yeah, so the first thing I think that we noticed was how quickly aphid populations can rise, especially under favorable growing conditions for aphids. Um, or not so favorable conditions for the crop. If the crop is under stress also, um, aphids will be more um, inclined to go and feed on those plants. So what I've seen is I can go from very few aphids to near economic thresholds in about a week. So I think the first lesson was to really under favorable con growing conditions for aphids to shorten your scouting interval to about five to seven days. So you make your first assessment um, and you, you count aphids per plant and you have a first assessment. Then every three to five days, you're gonna go out and do another assessment because the, the threshold is 250 aphids per plant and increasing. Reason being that there are lots of beneficials in, in, in soybeans and other crops and they can regulate that aphid population. For example, lady beetles, they can eat up to 100 aphids a day. So depending on how many beneficials, lady beetles, lace wings, et cetera, are present, they can regulate that population. So that increasing part of the, of the threshold was really important this year. We saw fields that stayed at threshold or declined. It's safe to say that there has been some economical levels in various areas throughout the province. I can't necessarily say that it was any certain region because I know of some spraying that's taken place in, in southern Manitoba in the interlake region. So I don't think there's any region necessarily that was more or less affected. And I think another thing that we can take from this year is that growers and agronomists are asking more questions about these numbers because we saw such high numbers in certain areas and so many fields affected. Um, because there are so many numbers that go into that threshold. Uh, we hear about the economic threshold. We hear about the damage boundary, which is the number where any type of damage occurs. And then we hear about the economic injury level. So I think it's really good that we're being really vigilant about scouting and asking these questions. Um, and so I think it's going to bring more awareness to perhaps doing a better job of extension on what those numbers are and how we can use them in the future to make better decisions. There also seems to be increasing awareness of beneficial insects and the importance mm -hmm. of counting those numbers too. Absolutely. So capturing the beneficials and, and how, how good they can be as predators and regulating those numbers. So where do you see this going in the, the future then in terms of how growers make and agronomists make this decision whether or not to, to spray for, for soybean aphids. It's a 250 and increasing number, which probably comes from other geographic regions. Yeah. Is that going to change here? So I think the real thing here is going to be, you know, sparking up those conversations with the entomologists and those who have done the research. Um, because the, the 250 economic threshold takes into account a certain lag period between the time that you make that decision and the time that you're going to spray. But I think these days, farmers and agronomists, they're so aware of scouting procedures, like they're there every few days and they can make an, a call to action to spray within a day or two. So that week long lag period may be providing too much flexibility. And if we can sharpen in on what that either damage boundary or economic injury level is, we might be able to um, have more flexibility in spraying and perhaps wait a little longer, which may lead to not having to spray. Not ha because then the beneficials might catch up in the meantime. Exactly. Like okay. What does this mean for uh, for the future in terms of, I guess, just pay attention to the, the research that's being done and uh, and listen for updates on, on thresholds and, and this type of information? Absolutely. So it goes back to vigilant scouting, um, understanding thresholds, um, what those thresholds mean, and then sparking that conversation with researchers and entomologists and just keeping everybody aware and updated with the research. All right. Thanks for your time again, Kristen.